I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Will you please rise as we sing, Glorify Thy Name. bow with me. Dear most blessed and wonderful God and Father, how will it be thy name in all the earth and heaven? Let the heavens sing your praises. Let the earth sing your praises. Let all mankind sing your praises for you truly are our God and our Abba Father. We come together this morning to worship you. You have taken our broken lives and made them whole. You have pulled us from the pits of hell and given us salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. When we had nothing, you gave us hope. When we had no place to call home, you took us in. You adopted us and made us spotless before you. And even now, your son is building for us our mansion in heaven. How much more could a father do than to show the love you have shown upon us? We are unworthy, yet you make us worthy. We were unloved, yet you filled us with your love each and every day of our lives. We can never repay the love you have shown to us. Yet we come this morning to praise your name, to sing and to worship and show our love for you. Fill this place with your Holy Spirit presence and take joy in our worship. Teach us to understand your ways. Help us to learn to love one another. Open our minds and our hearts and bring us closer yet to you. For it's in the name of your Son, our Lord, and our precious Savior, Jesus Christ, we, that we get, are able to come before you this morning and pray. Amen. You may be seated. As we say, this lonesome valley. You must go and 
stand your trial. You have to stand it by yourself. Oh, nobody else can stand it for you. You have to stand it by yourself. Our responsive reading this morning is from Psalms 97, 11, and 12. Light dawns for righteous people. Find joy for those who are Find joy in the Lord, you righteous people. Give thanks to him as you remember how holy he is. Amen. Our memory verse uh, for this month is 1 John 4.10, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John 4.10. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. John, John, All right. Now, if you got kids, let's get them close to the TV this morning or this evening uh, uh, or whatever time it is that you pick up, uh, uh, pick up something. It's interesting because I had somebody come in this morning to tell me that, that uh, they listened to me on the radio this morning and appreciated the sermon. Never give up. Kids, come on. Get out there and get to going. God is on my side. Never give up. And, uh, you know, I think that that's a good message, especially for our young people, especially especially now. I know last night late, I, I went to the, uh, my computer to check on the, 
uh, on the weather, and it was supposed to be miserable this morning. It was supposed to be uh, uh, blowing a, a half an inch, uh, uh, an hour of snow. One of the th places I read said we were supposed to get six to ten inches of snow, and I was like, oh, no, God, what do we do? And so the song came up. In, into my head, never give up. So we're going to get up in the morning, and you know, even though the and and it wasn't it wasn't that it was a great thing that we had to lose an hour of sleep this morning either, but uh, never give up. And we got out here, and the sun was shining. I passed by Sharon's house, and her car had snow on it, and I'm thinking, oh, and the snow was just starting to really blow, and and then God. Uh, Lifted up my day by having somebody come in and say, oh, I heard you on the radio this morning. A great message. And and uh, so I appreciate, I appreciate that. So it's good to be here in the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. And if, if you're a kid watching at home, I, it's one of the messages that I, I want you to understand. We, we don't serve a God that allows us to just give up. Because he's he's always he's always there. He's there with us. We have hope for always a bright future. Because if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, nothing bad can happen to you. We're in Christ, and it's so good to know that. That's uh, Linda went through surgery uh, uh, finally, uh, and she's here this morning because she's not going to give up either, right, Linda? And and we just got a lot of stuff that we we need to do, and and uh, we want you uh, that are that watching us at home, listening to us on the radio. The two programs, one out of out of uh, WUZZ that we get at 8:30 on Sunday mornings. Uh, the 104.5 out of Meadville, 105.3 out of the Titusville area, 99.3 out of Mercer. We cover a big area, and then at at 10.30 every Sunday morning at 105.9 uh, out of uh, Talk Erie. And then, of course, we're on Armstrong Cable, and uh, you can pick us up on several different channels there, 100. I found us uh, six in Titusville, and I, I, I don't know, 21 or 23 on other places. It's kind of different wherever wherever you have up uh, uh, that channel that uh, broadcasts religious programming on Sunday mornings. Uh, we're, we're with you probably. If you're watching us, you're probably watching watching us Sunday evening at uh, 7 p.m. on Armstrong Cable, or you might be watching us Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. On, on that same Armstrong Cable channel. And then he tell people on my radio station, you can go to uh, CBC, put, go to your computer, go to the, 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 the bot where you type in that uh, search uh, line bar, type in CBC, Community Bible Church, cbc.tv, uh, because we're kind of halfway between Townville and Titusville, and, and so we've got uh, cbc.tv at yahoo.com, and if you type that in there, uh, it will take you to, uh, right in the main uh, 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 search screen area to uh, 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 to where you can just click on our Facebook page. And so uh, uh, that's great. You can pick us up on YouTube. You can pick us up on Facebook. You can go to the Internet. And uh, uh, you can go to the streammedia.tv. And I know Luke uh, 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 and the people there do uh, at the stream do a wonderful job to make sure that the program gets out. And, you know, you can pick up this program pretty early in the week uh, on all these other so that's one of the things that we're, we're doing here. Uh, we're not giving up. <laughs> We've had a lot of stuff go on with us uh, uh, here, but we, we, we don't give up. We're finding new ways to plug into the community and to reach you and spread the gospel because that's what we're supposed to be doing is spreading the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We love our Lord and we love doing what he has commanded us to do and that is to reach out to you to spread the gospel and if you would like to help us uh, do that, our church doors are open to everyone and we want everyone to know that everyone is always welcome. 
Bible study uh, is uh, Wednesday evenings at uh, 6 p.m. 6 to, I mean at 7 p.m., 7 to 8, and uh, we're generally done uh, by 8 o'clock, and uh, we have a generally a pretty good Bible study, uh, and it's great to have Linda back after her, her surgery this week as well. If you need counseling, please give me a call at that number, 814-967-3628, and uh, we'll set you up with, uh, with some counseling. I know that, that think times are tough. You know, for a lot of people, a lot of, lot of things going on in the world around us, and and uh, uh, some people need counseling, and we pray that that uh, if you do, uh, that you will find that that uh, find that number that you see on the screen, eight one four nine six seven three six two eight, and uh, give me a call, uh, uh, and we'll set you up for for counseling. If you need prayer. Please send me a prayer request, uh, and I'll make sure that we don't give out your name. And I, I, I you know, we're not big on on. Uh, uh, I, I think a lot of people these days, and I'm one of those ones, probably like a lot of you, that kind of afraid to give my email address or give my address or give out my telephone number because right away somebody's going to sell it, and I'm going to be bombarded with all kinds of unwanted uh, things. I can't tell you how much time I spend unsubscribing on my email to, for things I never subscribe to, you know, now. And so I, but we don't do that here. And so your, your information, I consider being a pastor and a counselor and a, a, an important, very important function, and uh, I maintain your privacy here, and uh, we we keep that uh, in house. So if you want to call me, write me, send me a, a card, ask for prayer, come to see counseling. You can be assured your information stops right here. It doesn't go any farther than, than that. And I'm not going to be the one that's going to bombard you with a lot of requests for, for, for money, even though we need money. Uh, and, and that it's uh, always uh, uh, fine. We, we uh, bought propane at the beginning of the year, kind of did a few little things in order to save us about $1,000 uh, over the winter compared to other years for for propane, and, and fortunately, God gave us a, 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 a nice uh, a, a nice winter, and I didn't have to spend a lot of money on snow plowing, and, and with the changes that we've made, it looks like we're going to get through with the, our, our propane buy and uh, uh, be, uh, uh, be in pretty good shape. So anyway, um, give us a call at, uh, at that number, 814-967-3628. Now, do you need prayer or counseling? If you need prayer or counseling, now is the time because I'm going to go... F Stand before our God, before the throne of grace. I'm going, and God gives us the permission and the ability to come and stand before him whenever whenever we need. So if you have prayer, please please lift those up to me up now as we come together, all come together as as one, as a body uh, together in Christ. And anyone here have a praise. I'm I'm praising that I see Linda here this morning and and uh, that she braved the uh, uh, the weather. And I'm thank I'm praising God that he made the morning such that it wasn't what it's supposed to be because Linda wouldn't have gotten out of the house this morning had it been. And so it's great to see her here and I'm glad the snow stopped uh, falling over on Sharon's car so she could get out this morning as well. Anyone else have a praise or a prayer request? I want to praise the Lord for um, the wisdom that my doctor had and for my wonderful friend Shirley and for another friend Diane and anyone else that you know showed their love while I was going through all this. 
Yes, I, I, I hear that, and, and surely what a, what a wonderful friend to have uh, uh, who, who took you up and spent a lot of time with you, watched over you, and, and now you have a nurse come in a couple times uh, uh, a week to watch over you, but you're, you're up and around, and, and, and that's, that's great. So, yes, we, wanna, we, we always, you know, want to be thankful and lift up to the Lord those people that he sends and puts in our, it puts in our path who, who take care of us, right, and, and watch over us. Anyone else this morning? If you have a praise on, on it uh, there, now's the time to lift them up to God. Sharon, did you have a praise? No, unspoken. Unspoken? unspoken. Okay. And any prayer requests? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Most Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for our church, and we thank you for our congregation. I thank you for all of those who listen to us and watch us, and, and even for the young man this morning who came in to thank, thank me for, for the radio program and, and the message this morning. We just thank you for all the many things that you do for us, and we just thank you for keeping your hand upon Linda and, and watching over her and her doctor and the wisdom that you gave him to deal with her. We just thank, ask you to continue to, to be with uh, uh, Sharon and her family, her unspoken request to be with the baby and, and uh, all of those that, that she cares for uh, all week long in, in her job as well. We know that there are people at home that have prayer requests, and we ask you to, to receive them a, as well as uh, you receive those that are being presented by me this morning. Watch over us and guide us. We know that we are going through terrible times in this country. The world is going through, through really hard times that we've been forewarned about that are coming. And uh, we know that the country is going through the election, and that's going to be a really uh, difficult time for most of us. And we just ask you to help us to get, to get through that, to be with all of those who serve this country, whether they're policemen or firemen or, or, or medical doctors or nurses or people in the military. Uh, we just ask you to keep your hand upon them and their family. Watch over us and guide us and help us be the people that we need to be. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. He leadeth me.
If you will turn with me in your Bibles to one of those little books in the back, John. We're going to do Second John uh, uh, this morning. It's just one, uh, 13 verses, so we'll do Second uh, John 1, 1 through 13. From the church leader to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love because we share the truth. I am not the only one who loves you. Everyone who knows the truth also loves you. We love you because of the truth which lives in us and will be with us forever. Good will, goodwill, mercy, and peace will be with us. They come from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, who in truth and love is the Father's Son. I was very happy to find some of your children living in the truth as the Father has commanded us. Dear lady, I'm now requesting that we continue to love each other. It's not as though I'm writing to give you a new commandment. Rather, from the beginning, we were commanded to love each other. Love means that we live by doing what he commands. We were commanded to live in love, and you have heard this from the beginning. Many people who deceive others have gone into the world. They refuse to declare that Jesus Christ came in flesh and blood. This is the mark of a deceiver and an antichrist. Be careful that you don't destroy what we've worked for, but that you receive your full reward. Everyone who doesn't continue to teach what Christ taught doesn't have God. The person who continues to teach what Christ taught has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and doesn't bring these teachings, don't take him into your home or even greet him. Whosoever greets him shares the evil things he is doing. I have a lot to write to you. I would prefer not to write a letter. Instead, I hope to visit and talk things over with you personally. Then we will be completely filled with joy. The children of your chosen sister greet you. Love expressed. The second epistle of John is a personal letter from the elder under the elect lady and her children. You can feel here that John is full or overwhelmed with the feeling of love for which he is having a hard time to express. He would like to do it in words and spoken words rather than in written words. This makes me think of the song, I Can Only Imagine. How will I act when I Come face to face with my Lord and Savior. I will be overwhelmed, I am sure, with emotion, as it appears John is here. In John's day, people didn't think of their pagan religions as being something they could love. Pagan religions promise to do something for you if you promise to do something first for them. Love was expressed mainly or mostly in sexual behavior. They didn't have a love for their, their gods. Their gods punished them, and, and they lived a life that was full of punishment. So their the love was expressed in the sexual behavior that went on in their temples, not in their hearts or out on the roads. And life was lived in the reality of a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That was the commandment, to do unto others before they did it unto you. But Christ came and the rules changed. Love for the brethren, not dog-eat-dog, -dog, came into the world. Accepting Christ brought salvation for a lost humanity. John writes this great love letter to the church he loved so dearly. A church that is alive and real and breathing and is based upon truth and promise. And I don't think that 
we very often think about the church in these terms. We think about the church as a building. We don't think about it as, as being alive, as being living, as being something that Christ died for. But maybe we should. The church is living, and we should treat her so. When I say the church, I'm not thinking of any local church or any denomination, but the total body of believers, everyone who is in the Lord Jesus Christ who professes to be born again. This epistle has been relevant for the church down through the centuries. And what is written here has been very productive in the life of the church. I believe that since our contemporary church has such an emphasis on love, we need this epistle to cause us to shape up and to get a correct perspective on what love truly is. We don't aren't getting that from the, the church today. We're getting that love is something else. Love is maybe God surrendering and giving up uh, his instructions and what it takes and for us to be born again. But the world wants us to believe that love is something that God just doles out to everyone. The word truth is emphasized in this epistle, and it is the key word to the epistle. Christian love can only be expressed in the bounds of, of the family of God, those who have the truth. The truth here is the word of God and also the one who is revealed in the word, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, whom I love in truth, is the correct literal translation. John is saying two things here. One, that the object of his love must be living and alive and real. And also that he is genuine in asserting this as a statement of heartfelt, honest love. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. John embraces the true body of believers here. They also love this church with a genuine love. John says that his deep, genuine love has been brought to blossom for the truth's sake, which dwells in us because we have the Holy Spirit and shall be with us forever because once we have the Holy Spirit, we cannot lose it. We need to recognize that the truth needs to be defended. We need to stand for the truth of God and for the word of God. Many of our so-called conservative men have adopted a very sophisticated and carefree method in an attempt to be clever in what they teach and preach about love and about salvation and about Christ. They will not come out flat-footed and say it just as it is that you must be born again, but they toy around with it. The point is that the truth needs to be stated clearly, and that's another thing that they toy around with, that the truth can be relative, but we're going to find out that's not truthful. That's not factual. We're living in such a day that it is nearly impossible to stand upon a truth without getting seasick. I think we must all remember when truth depended upon what the meaning of is is. A prosecutor in Georgia gets up on the witness stand and says her relationship didn't start until 2023. It's my relationship, she says. I get to state when it started and it didn't start until late in 2023. Even though the other prosecutor and I were sleeping together, taking trips together, texting and sex texting back and forth in 19, 20, uh, 19 and 20. If you watch the news this week, you may have seen biological boys actually beating up on biological girls as the basketball season is winding down for the year and the teams that have made it to the championship have boys on them masquerading as girls. Up is down. Port and starboard can be anything you like. 
Truth is not in the pudding, and neither is love found there any longer. John wants us to know that the church is true and living, and it is living still because it has as its core principle truth. That is the very interesting statement because I have done a lot of study to try to discover how other religions in the world, and there have been many, but how have they come and died? There have been big religions in the world. Greek and Roman and Viking and Egyptian religions lived large on planet Earth. So did many others. Where did, where did they go? Ultimately, they all die because society discovers they were not based on truth. So a truth that is constant, never changing, even in our changing time, is something to be loved. The church is real, and so are its believers. We are all within the church in the bosom of our trusted and loving Lord Jesus Christ, who holds us by the promise of his Father, God himself. That promise must be, in truth, living forever. As I read this, I keep thinking and wondering about my car. Strange, right? But here is my thinking. Over the winter, driving back and forth to church, I have had to, to drive on some pretty icy roads. And one day, my car just completely slid out from under uh, uh, any traction that it had to the road whatsoever. A completely helpless and sinking feeling fell over me. By miracle, my car managed to stay on the road with the rubber side down and slide past the icy spot and back onto dry pavement. As I am reading this little letter, I'm wondering how I would have behaved had my car been real and alive. I might have gotten out of the car and hugged and kissed her all over. She was real, she was true, and she saved my life. What a wonderful feeling I might have had. But the church is real. It is alive, and it is, and it continues to remain in the bosom of our Lord because it is truth. And I think this letter is that love letter that expresses a deep love that all of us should be expressing for a real, live, truthful thing that can never change, that we can build our houses and our futures upon. John loved the church, and John wants us also to love the Christian church. Love also requires work, and our work is to defend the truth of her innocent perfection. You are sitting in court waiting sentencing. You've already been found guilty, and all of a sudden in walks a witness with the truth that saves you and sets you free. That is what our Lord did for us. He walked in when we belonged to Satan and death and destruction and despair, and he was the only one with the courage to breathe the truth and to set you free. And he came as a person with an impeccable word. Though Satan and the world wish only to destroy this perf his perfection and his word today. That love we should embrace and that love we should protect and that love we should spread throughout the entire world. For the truth's sake, which dwells in us and shall be with us forever, the indwelling Spirit of God makes these things real to those of us who are born again and shall be with us forever. The truth shall not change. It is unchangeable. And if you look at my, my slide there, you see the, parent, the period at the bottom all by itself. It is unchangeable, period. He is ever. The truth will not change. In verse 3, John adopts a greeting that is a little different from the, that of Paul and Peter and James and even in his other writings, John's other writings. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from the God 
and the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father in truth and love. These, there are three words here that we need to be clear on in our thinking. They differ without there really being a great difference in the sense that they all apply to the same thing. The words are love, mercy, and grace. John introduces the word mercy here in his greeting. What is the difference between the love, the mercy, and the grace of God? We read in Ephesians 2, 4, and 5, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved." This is such a wonderful scripture because it combines all three. Paul says that God is rich in mercy, and because of his great love for us, he saves us by grace. What is the love of God? Before anything was created, God was love. Love is that in God which existed before he could care to exercise mercy or grace. Love is the nature of God. It is what is called the attribute of God. God is love. But the interesting thing is that the love of God never saved the sinner. The love of God caused God to move in the direction of mercy and grace. It caused him to exercise mercy and grace. Next, the question arises, what is the difference between mercy and grace? God is rich in mercy. Why is he rich in mercy? Because he is love. And because God is love, he by mercy provided for the need of sinful man. But mercy didn't save man. Grace is that in him which acts freely to save because all the demands of holiness have been satisfied. God today is free to act in grace. You are a sinner who cannot provide anything for God. You haven't anything to offer him. But now grace means that God can come to you, a lost sinner, and say, I am love, and I am rich in mercy. I love you, and I have provided my mercy, a Savior for you. Now, if you will trust him, by grace are ye saved. Through faith in that, not of yourself, it is the gift of God. There is a fine distinction between these words. Salvation stems from the love of God, but God does not save by his love or by his mercy. Our God is a holy God. And the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. But listen, you see, God did not so love the world that he saved the world. He didn't do that. God so loved the world that by his mercy he provided a Savior for the world. For whosoever will accept and believe, and he can now save by grace, you must believe in Jesus Christ. There is something else here that is important to see. Salvation is not the only the expression of the love of God, but it is also an expression of the justice and righteousness of God. We not only need John 3.16, but we also need Romans 3.26 to declare his righteousness that he might be just and a justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. In order to justify you when you trust Christ, God has to be righteous and holy and just. He cannot simply open the back door of heaven and slip you in under cover of darkness. He's got all his other creations there that have to follow through rules. You and I are not fit for heaven. All by our lonesome, we must be born again. We are alienated from him. We have no fellowship with him. Communication broke down in the Garden of Eden, and he is the one who renewed it because he must be just and righteous. His mercy provided a savior and it was because he loves you. He can be righteous and do this. 
that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus Christ. Therefore, John can now write, grace be with you. That is the way God saves you. Mercy, mercy provided a savior, and peace. When you have all these, then the peace of God that passes all understanding is going to keep your heart. As John said, for the truth's sake, which dwell in us and shall be with us forever. You shall know these great truths are not something which God is going to change. He is not going to change his mind tomorrow and say, well, I'm do going to act differently than I have before. I think public opinion is going in a different direction, so I'm going to change so that I come in line with public opinion. God's never going to say that because God doesn't and God can't change. He is not a weather vane. I am reminded of a farmer who had on his barn a weather vane which said on it, God is love. A preacher drove up to the farm and said to the man, do you mean that God's love is as variable as that weather vane? The farmer said, heavens no, I didn't mean that. I mean that it does not matter which way the wind is blowing, God is still love. That is true. Our God is love, and because he is love, he has provided salvation for you. He will never change that. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who died for you. He is the Son of the Father, that is, his position in the Trinity. Remember that love must be exercised in the context of truth. And I am very dogmatic about that. Now, if you ask me what I think I'll be doing this afternoon after church, I must say that I don't know because my wife hasn't decided yet. I'm not dogmatic about what I'm going to do this afternoon. But right now, I'm very dogmatic about Second John. I rejoice greatly that I found of my children Walking in truth, John says. Walking in truth refers to the manner of life they are living, meaning walking in obedience to the commandments from the Father. It is wonderful to have children who are walking in truth. The commandment is that we walk in the light as he is in the light, that we order our lives by the word of God. The teaching that the Lord Jesus gave was, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not because you are fundamentalists, but if ye have love one to another. This is the commandment that we have had from the beginning, that we are to love one another. Here we have it, walking in truth and loving one another. Again, we are talking about loving fellow believers. This is the balance with, that is needed today in the church. Are you walking in truth? Are you really walking in the knowledge of the word of God? All the apostles emphasize that we are to walk in truth and love. That love is for the brethren. It is only for the believers in Jesus Christ. It is for those who are in Christ. I do not quite understand this idea of watering down the Christian faith by saying that we are to love everybody. God has never told us to do that. God tells us to take the gospel to the world. That is the way that you and I can show our concern and love. And this is love that we walk in his commandments. The Christian is called to a higher plane where he is to produce in his life by the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, etc. If these things are in us and abide in us, you and I are walking after his commandments. If they are not in us, we are not walking after his commandments. You cannot say that you are loving someone unless you have a concern, a genuine concern for him, especially a concern for his spiritual welfare. 
John and Paul are writing to people who lived in the Roman world. In Paul's day, the emperor was bloody Nero. John saw one emperor after another rise who persecuted the Christians, beginning with Titus, the Roman general who destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. That persecution was severe. The Roman world was a brutal world, a cruel world, a world that was pagan to its core. And yet, here were men and women who were walking down Roman roads, living in pagan cities, and they were walking after Christ's commandments. They were translating the gospel into life, and for many, it was a walk that ended their life in the ar Roman arena. Yet, they kept making that walk. This is the thing that is desperately needed in our day. Are you making that walk? The Lord Jesus taught his, taught this. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. How do we identify the spirit of antichrist? John gives us the answer. Who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. The spirit of Antichrist is to, to deny the deity of Christ. It is to deny everything that is said about him, everything that he said, and everything that he did for us in redemption by dying on the cross and by being raised bodily from the dead. That is Antichrist, and that is the spirit of Antichrist. This is coming in the future, and everything, this side of it, is preparing the way for the coming of this one. So much so that the world will be ready for them. And it looks to me like the world is almost ready for them right now. The proof that you are a child of God is that you walk in love for the brethren. John utters a warning that many deceivers have come into the world. The believer today walks a very dangerous pathway through, through this world. The left side of the pathway is the jungle of liberalism and apostasy. And it is a beautiful but dangerous jungle because in it are beautiful but dangerous animals which are ready to devour us. Then on the opposite side of the pathway, there is the wilderness filled with rattlesnakes. It is the wilderness of extreme fundamentalism, which is totally devoid of love. The only thing they think is important is to have the right doctrine because of an overweening ambition. They will trample you underfoot. Your reputation is not safe in these hands, and they will exhibit hatred and bitterness rather than love towards you. God's men who stand for the truth and who preach the word of God are men upon whom you can depend upon and who are very gracious in every manner. A great message of Second John is that truth walks in shoe leather, and if it does not, it is dangerous. Love and righteousness are the two manifestations of the child of God. If you deny the deity of Christ, you are not a Christian. You may be religious, but you are not a Christian. Let's understand that. After all, Christian means one who is a follower of Christ, one who believes on him. You cannot be a follower of Christ unless you believe in his virgin birth, unless you believe in his deity, his miraculous life, and his work of redemption on the cross. Every believer ought to be working for a reward, to be able to hear him say something someday. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. At the end of his life, Paul was able to say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. During his life, he wasn't sure of it, for he said that he didn't want to be disproved when he came into the presence of Christ. Therefore, it will behoove us to be very careful not to be taken in by deceivers. Whosoever goes farther than what is 
right that is goes to some extreme teaching about God doesn't have God. It is just that simple. We get confused by that, but it is the world that attempts to confuse us because the world knows most Christians don't know the word of God. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of God hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. If you are abiding in the doctrine of Christ, you have God the Father and you have God the Son. And you have access to the Father through the Son. We have access to God through Christ by his marvelous infinite grace if we abide in a doctrine of Christ. The word abide means to remain in. This is a permanent arrangement. To abide, to remain in the word, not to change it as many are doing today. The word of God is emphatic about murder, marriage, sex, and about how to be saved. Yet today we can in no way shape or forms where that we are remaining or abiding in the word that God gave us. John is saying here that he who abides in the doctrine of Christ who remains in it and doesn't change it has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Here is one of the places that just drives me crazy with the world. Those who do not know God or Christ would teach you that love and to love and interact with everyone. It blew my gasket when Glenn Beck, professing to be a Christian, held a universal religious gathering of all kinds of religious leaders on the Capitol steps as if it was something important a few years ago. We as Christians are told not to mix with those who are presenting another religious belief. Neither bid him Godspeed. I cannot think of a stronger statement than this. Today there are so-called Christian people who go to the border and illegally retrieve illegal immigrants, believing they are performing some Christian duty. They pretend to be a follower of Christ, John says. It lays it on the line here. If there come unto you any... And bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. John says something else that ought to be, ought to uh, alert every one of us today. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. If you entertain a false teacher if you support him and are a part, you are a partner with him in his deeds. This is the reason that you ought to investigate everything that you give your money to or your time to as a Christian because if you are giving to the wrong thing, God considers you a partner in it. The Lord Jesus gave a parable of this in connection uh, uh, in, uh, with that where, where uh, the employer who was about to be fired uh, called in everybody that his employer uh, owed, that, that, that owed his employer money and he gave them a discount and he did that hoping that they were going to give him favors uh, later on after he was fired. Christ never said that that was a good thing. Having many things to write you, I would not write with paper and ink, John says, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face. We are going to see John face to face in heaven. And one of the most important things in all, all of Scripture, that our joy may be full. Where he leads me. I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, take thy cross and follow. 
If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this morning's a good morning to come and ask him to come into your heart. Or you probably need somebody to go with you, to hold your hand, to be with you every step of the way. And Jesus follow, promises to bring his Father, our Abba Father, along and hold your hand and go with you all the way, all the way. Polly, would you... Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask you to go with us and be with us each and every day, even though you make that promise, we ask you to continue to give us the assurance that you're always there. We should know that by now, that you never leave us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. You will never leave us face this world all alone, even when it's the worst of days. Watch over us and guide us. Keep your hand upon us. Keep your hand upon our families and our homes and all the things you do for us. And we will give you all the glory and all the praise for everything that you do for us in our lives. Guide us, lead us, and direct us. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen.